Hey, my name is Weefies, and welcome back to another Redstone video. In today's video, we're going to be starting something. It's a little series that I uh, got from you guys, and it turns out a lot of you want a just basic Redstone guide. So today, it's the Redstone Rulebook, or maybe a better name that I'll think of later, Episode 1. In this series, I'm going to do my best to explain basic Redstone concepts, moving up from very beginner to experienced and, you know, some advanced. I'm not a Redstone professional. But I do know my basics, so I'll do my best to help you guys understand, and I'll also do separate videos for each block that is going to be useful for us. So if you don't understand a block, I'll do my best to explain it and its uses. However, in the first video, we're going to be looking at a bunch of the important blocks and pretty much what redstone is, and this is for the very, very beginners. However, I recommend watching it because it will set a foundation for what the rest of this series is going to be like. And if you do enjoy and learn something, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It would mean the world to me. But regardless, let's get right into it. So, redstone is pretty much Minecraft's equivalent of an electrical system. We have basically here a lever and a piece of redstone dust. I'm sure that this is going to be review for most of you. If I flip this lever by right-clicking it, the redstone dust will turn on. Redstone dust is pretty much the electric wires, and it has two states. On, uh, off, and on. You can tell it's on when it's powered. If you're wondering why it's square for me, it's just a resource pack. This is a perfectly valid statement. Even though it doesn't look like they're touching, the lever is powering the redstone. That works perfectly fine. No big deal. Now let's move into the types of inputs we're going to be using. You're going to be seeing these ones a lot. A stone button, a lever, and occasionally a wooden button. These are the two most popular types of input. Now let me demonstrate the difference. A stone button will give a pulse for a few sec for like a bit and then turn off. One second, I think. Or maybe one or 0 0.8 seconds. A wooden button will pulse for one second and then time out, or 1.2 seconds, I always get that mixed up. And a lever will hold a continuous output until you toggle it again. It's just like that. Afterwards, we have the detector rail, you're not going to be using this much. A trap chest, you're not going to be using this much either. And you're not going to be using a trip wire either, or a daylight sensor. And you might be using some pressure plates, but don't worry about these. About what these mean and the differences. I'll explain that all in a future video. But for now, all you have to worry about is knowing what a lever and a button do. The next thing is input styles. Uh, redstone is kind of wacky and it takes a bit to get used to all the different input styles, but this can be really useful when trying to make a contraption compact. Uh, this is a perfectly valid statement because the lever, it doesn't look like it's touching and it's not. It's powering the block. And the block is, pow is because it's powered, it powers the redstone dust. This is a perfectly logical statement as I said before and as you saw over there. Over here we have this. Another thing levers can do, or pretty much any input source, is power a block and then redstone dust can take it out of any side of that block. Now note, levers give something called hard powering, which I will go over very soon, but you don't have to worry about that until we get there. So boop, and everything is powered. A lever will also power, or input sorry, will also power underneath, so if there's a block, and underneath it is a redstone dust. This is also, this doesn't look like it should work, but it does. This also works, but it's kind of confusing. So you have to make sure your lever is placed against the bottom of the block you want to power, like so. So this will work. However, this will not work. This will not power the redstone dust at all because the lever is not touching this block. It's powering this block, but not that block. And finally, we have soft and hard powering. So what this means is that, well, there's two things, soft powering and hard powering. We'll go over this very soon when we reach the repeater. However, what's happening here is that you see this block is being powered by the redstone current. However, redstone dust only soft powers a block, which means that these redstone dust don't get powered because the block is simply soft powered. When I input a lever, levers hard power. There's no really way to, like, determine if there's a soft powering or hard powering you just have to kind of memorize it and don't worry it's not that difficult you'll figure it out really fast if you don't already get it but hard powering versus soft powering and i'll go over this in a second the next thing are important blocks uh the first one is the redstone this is in no particular order by the way the first one is the redstone torch the redstone torch gives a continuous redstone output just like this however it can be toggled off if the block that it is on is powered so like this, you can see all these turn off because this lever is powering this block, which in turn is turning off all the redstone torches. If you know computer programming, which you don't have to, by the way, this is kind of the, th this is the equivalent of a not gate. It kind of inverts, inverts any signal. 
The next things are pistons. These things are really important because you'll see them a lot in many different builds and they have many, many uses. There's two sticky, there's two pistons. The sticky piston, which is identified by its green face, and the regular piston. Um, I will be referring to the piston's head or this part, the top, as the face of the piston from now on, so you don't have to know that, just kind of figure it out. Uh, so here's how it works. We can power both of these and you can see they extend, which is kind of cool. However, pistons will not retract their block and sticky pistons will. So you can do this, but you cannot retract with a regular piston. Just something to keep in mind. Over here we have another example of soft powering. Even though this block is being soft powered, pistons can actually take that soft powering and use it to activate. And you can do this. These both work as statements. The next thing is a repeater. This is probably the most used block after the redstone dust. I think it's really important to know what this does and it's not complicated at all. I'm sure you get it really fast. Repeaters do two things. One of them is delay. When you right click a repeater, it gains delay, which is kind of difficult to understand when you just talk about it, but let me put it into perspective. Here are two pistons. If we flick the lever, they will both power on at the same time. However, if I right click this piston, it now has one, two, three, plus one, I know it's annoying to remember, four ticks of delay. And you can see this one extends first and retracts first because it's like a little waiting signal. This will be used in many different redstone contraptions and it's really important to make sure your timing is good if you're working on speed or just overall functionality. And, and the, remember when I talked about soft powering? So soft powering and hard powering is really interesting when it comes to repeaters. Repeaters can hard power blocks and take out outputs of soft powering. So this block is being soft powered. However, a repeater can actually take that output and vice versa, a repeater can hard power a block, so this works as well. Very simple. The last thing you have to remember, which I'll set up right here, is that repeaters, you might not use this if it's a big redstone contraption, unless it's a big redstone contraption, but repeaters extend the pulse. So right now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, is the maximum number of blocks redstone signal can travel. So you can see, this one no longer emits particles or it's no longer bright. However, we can take a repeater output of this block, and now it can go another 15 blocks. It strengthens the signal, and yeah, that's pretty useful if it's a big redstone contraption, but if it's just a small one, you're not going to be using this feature of the repeater very often unless you need to. The next thing is an observer. Uh, observers are kind of odd, and you have to place them correctly, unlike, oh, unlike well, a lot of these blocks actually have to place correctly, but you place observers in the direction you want them to power. So this little hole is the output and it looks like it's in the middle but it powers anything on the ground so observers are kind of interesting and we'll go over them in their own separate video but they detect block states and updates so if i place a block in front of this observer you can see it releases it and so it makes an output so boom it flashes and that's the thing about the observer it flashes we can use this for many different builds but i'm only going to be using it i'm not going to be you know talking about it right now so if I delete this block, it also flashes. Um, this works with many things. If a piston were to extend in front of an observer, uh, boom, you can see that the observer detects the block state has changed. And we'll go over this later, don't worry about it. However, that's pretty much the basics of an observer. Another thing to note is that unless the block actually has a different state when powered, uh, a observer won't detect when a block is being powered. So even though this block is technically powered and we can place redstone dust, the observer does not detect that. And it does detect also when redstone dust is turned on or even shape-shifted. Yes, that is the word I'm using, shape-shifted. The next things are hoppers. We're not gonna use hoppers too much, but they are pretty important when it comes to monostable circuits. Yes, that will have its own video or maybe just another video, not this video. Uh, a hopper is pretty simple. I have a texture pack that lets me see which way hoppers are pointing, but you can pretty much tell by the direction of their tail. You place a hopper into the block you want it to throw items into, and that's what a hopper does. You give it an item, and it will then carry it to the next hopper or item storage location, like a chest. If I throw an item into this hopper, you can see, well, if, actually first, if I throw an item into this hopper, you can see it stays there, because it has nowhere to go. The tail is pointing into nothing. Same thing if there's a block. Wool cannot hold items, so that's why nothing is happening. And over here, however, you can see, if we drop a redstone dust in there, yes, you can do that. Uh, it will not be in here anymore. That's because it has moved on to this one. 
And a really interesting feature of hoppers is a clock. If you make these guys go back and forth, you can see the redstone, it moves around. Right now it's in here, then it's there, then it's here, and you can make this a clock, but we're not going to be talking about that right now. Uh, the next thing is a comparator. I know a lot of you guys probably are, if you're confused by a redstone block the most, it's probably a comparator, if it's not one of the rails. So a comparator is very interesting, and we're going to be using it for one main function. The comparator has a subtract function, where you can subtract the input from one side uh, to this to its output. So I guess I can demonstrate that. If we have, okay, so a, a bit of terminology right here. Sorry for the weird break. Um, a redstone disk has a signal strength of 15. This is a 14, 13, 12, and that's how you get to zero. However, comparators can actually subtract. So right now, this comparator is being powered with a 14, with a 15, uh, 15 power redstone pulse. Blech. And we can also put here a 14 power redstone pulse into the side of the comparator. Now, uh, we're still going to have a 15 output because the comparator isn't on subtract mode. However, if we do put it into subtract mode by right clicking it, you can see the output changes to 1 because the main, uh, the main input 15 minus 14 does equal 1. And if you're wondering about negative outputs, that is not a thing. Uh, if we do this, you can see 14 minus 15 is 0 and there is no output. Comparators do hard power blocks, so I guess that's something to keep in mind. Subtraction is not what we're going to be talking about. However, the main function of comparators is detecting if something has items in it or it's being powered. It's pretty much if it's being filled. And this is a bit confusing at first. So right now we have a chest and a comparator, and we can do this as well because that's how comparators work. They can still take an output of the chest even if they're a block away. However, uh, what happens is that this chest is empty, so there's no output. But, if we put sandstone, you can see that there is an output, but it's very, very weak. Usually when dealing with comparators, you would put a repeater very soon after. Uh, and there's this really weird thing where it's like certain items will have a stronger signal strength than others. You really don't have to worry about this. Like, uh, see, this sword is um, t uh, 3, and a observer is 1, and that just has to do with stackability. But don't worry about that. The point is, a comparator will make an output when there's something inside the container in front of it. So a cauldron with water and even a cake will give a comparator output. Yes, a cake. You can eat a cake, which is pretty cool. And comparators will also take outputs out of power sources. So if I were to place a redstone torch in, in front of the comparator, you can see it works and gives an output of 15. Compare. Subtract. We're not focusing on subtraction. Yay. The next thing is a redstone block. Redstone blocks, we're not going to be using them a lot because they're kind of weird, but they pretty much, they're pretty much an always-on source. You can't turn them off, but they're kind of annoying because they, they cause butt updates, which you don't have to worry about. But redstone blocks will pretty much give a power to anywhere. They're like a lever, but they're always on. You cannot turn them off. Boop. The final thing is a redstone lamp. Redstone lamps will be our identifier to see if a redstone contraption is working. If a redstone contraption is working, the lamp should pulse or do whatever you want it to. It's a very basic block. It just turns on and off if given an input, and it makes light, so it's really cool as well. However, those are just the basic inputs. As we go forward in this guide, things will get more advanced, and we'll learn how to do many different kinds of mini circuits and how they can be applied to bigger builds. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them in the next videos. Uh, the Redstone Guidebook will have a few parts, like 1.5 will be dedicated to specific blocks, or just answering your guys' questions, where areas, whole numbers, will be dedicated to different concepts that I want to teach you, that I know I want to teach. So, I hope you have learned something, and if not, then uh, stick around, maybe learn something, and if you want to do Bedrock Redstone, that is a whole other subject that I will try to get to later, because I have no idea how to get Bedrock. Regardless, thanks so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it would mean the world to me. And yeah, I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.